enter the world of live action motion picture and television production. The Disney MGM Studios features everything you might need for a live action television show or movie, outdoor sets, sound stages, state-of-the-art editing and video equipment, and sound studios. We're going to see all these areas today, and we might even catch a production crew which is actually at work. Right now, if you take a look up to your right and up into the sky, you'll see our award-winning Earful Tower. This beautiful structure stands about 13 stories tall, capped off by a set of mouse ears weighing about 16 tons. For those of you in the back that are wondering what the hat size of the Earful Tower is, it's about 342 and 3 eighths. If you think those ears are big, you'll see the Q-tips we use to clean them. As around the corner, if you look down straight ahead, you'll see a black car with green spokes. That was used in the film The Untouchables, starring Kevin Costner and Sean Connery. And if you take a look off to your right, you'll see some more vehicles in our prop warehouse. And as around the corner from Dopey Drive onto Mickey Avenue, if you take a look off to your left, you'll see our production bungalows. This warehouse the production crews, which are currently using our facilities. Bungalow number three, we have the new Mickey Mouse Club. It's currently being shown weekday afternoons at 5.30 on the Disney Channel. You're going to get a chance to see a behind-the-scenes look at the Mickey Mouse Club on the second half of the tour. But right now, we're entering our greens department. This is where we store plant proof every branch, twig, and leaf. All our plants are grown in portable boxes, so it makes it much easier for them to move from set to locations. And we even have our own cast of characters out here. These topiary characters take about 10 years to develop. Pete's Dragon Elliot there has been growing since about 1981. Right now we're going to enter one of our more glamorous departments, so costuming. Academy Award winning Mary Poppins, Michael Jackson's spacesuit from Captain EO, and also some of the costumes worn by the co-stars who framed Roger Rabbit. We'll be slowing down in here so those of you in the back can get a good look at some of these costumes. As you can see, by taking a look over at those sketches on the far wall, that that's where it all begins. Everything is handed over to our talented seamstresses and tailors who take it from there. Now in our costuming department, we have over two and a half million costumes, which constitutes the world's largest working wardrobe. Just beyond costuming is our lighting department. That's where we store up to three and a half million watts of power and a clock center. Finally, we pass our seating shop. Inside here is where carpenters begin construction of sets, which are later finished on the sound stages. They built everything in here from a giant 40-foot submarine to the huge turntable that's used every day on the Mickey Mouse Club. They build a variety of different types of sets in here, and one type they build is called a standing set. Now, a standing set is a type of set that gets used over and over again. It can be as simple as a bedroom or as a commercial scene. We had to ship some artificial snow out here, hand pick the leaves off those trees, line the house with Christmas lights and decorations. We had our own winter wonderland right out here under sunny Florida skies in the middle of July. But, oh, it's Herbie the Love Bug, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody say hi to Herbie as we drive by. <laughs> i got a little of the acting bug left, I guess. He's currently staying at Burns' house with a such a film, Ernest Saves Christmas. Yeah, you may remember Herbie from some of his recent films. In fact, there was about 26 different Herbies made, actually. Each one was designed to do a specific act. One was designed to do wheelies. One was designed to fall apart. One was even designed so you could drive it from the back seat so it looked like there was no one inside driving. Now, if you take a look off to your left at this beige house, you may recognize it. It's the home of Rue McGlanahan, B. Arthur, Betty White, and Estelle Getty, TV's Emmy Award-winning Golden Girls. Now, if you're wondering why you never see the Golden Girls out in front of their house, it's because we do all the exterior shots down here at the beginning of the season with what's called a second unit. All the interior shots are done from a sound stage. The two bits of footage are then edited together for the final product you see every Saturday evening. Looks like set designers have been adding small props and details to this last blue house on the left. Basketball hoop over the garage, the tricycle in the driveway gives it that real lived in look. About the only thing that's missing is a swing set, and that's across the street in the back lot playground. Now up ahead is the urban counterpart to Residential Street, and we'll be getting to that in just a few minutes. Right now I'd like to direct your attention to our back lot church. 
you can see from the side, it does look like a small town country church with the old-fashioned clapboard sides and the wooden shingles around the windows. But our church can change as well. We're going to get back to that in just a few minutes, but right now we're going to take a little detour. This city. As we get new and different productions here through the years, our back lot will change and expand, but there will be some areas that we will leave untouched. Just because we don't change them doesn't mean they can't be used for production purposes, though. No? For example, if you take a look over to your left at this small forest, with the right set dressings and proper lighting, you can make it look just like a, well, small forest, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Got to reach for some of these bones. If you take a look off to your right, you'll see our back lot boneyard. This is where we store planes, trains, cars, jeeps, boats, and even spaceships. A lot of these cars have been used in previous productions that you may recognize. The tail end of that plane is from the film Casablanca. If you want to see the front end, go to the great movie ride later on today. It's in the Casablanca scene. We have the original cockpit of Mark Hamill's Snowspeeder from The Empire Strikes Back. That brown sand skiff, complete with battle scars, was used in Return of the Jedi. That silver navigational pod is from Walt Disney's Flight of the Navigator. And this odd-looking brown keelboat was last seen in the 1976 film The Treasures of Monacumbe. The film starred Peter Ustinov, who was filmed right on our own bay lake behind the Contemporary Resort. Now, I have referred to a lot of different things along the tour as props and set dressings, but there's a major difference. A prop is something that's actually used by an actor or actress to help enhance the scene. And everything else that's just lying around and not actually used is referred to as dressing. Now remember when I said the houses on Residential Street were just facades? If you take a look across the canal, you can get a good backstage look at our Residential Street. You'll see that the architectural details stop just beyond camera's range. It's because we only need to build what the camera is going to see. But what if the camera needed to see something that wasn't readily available nearby? For example, where in Central Florida could you find an active oil field in a rocky, dry, barren desert canyon? <laughs> well, you couldn't in Central Florida, so we built one right here for a reason. Another look at our back lot church. And again, you can see that it does look like a small town church, but as we move the camera around to the other side, it takes on the look of a big city cathedral. And that's very appropriate because the big city is our next stop. In fact, if you now take a look off to your right through the arch in the center of the park, you will be getting the best camera view of our skyscrapers down at the end of the street. Oh, wow. Don't worry about it if you miss that. We'll be coming back around again, give you another chance to take that shot. Oh, wow. Look at that. I can see all of you in the back, and you must be wondering, those skyscrapers look so real. They, they look like they go back to the mass steel and cement. Can we stand with velocity up to about 100 miles an hour? Yeah, this is down there. Now, if you take a look further up the street, we invite you all to come out here later on. As soon as you get out of the shuttle, you can follow the sign straight out to New York Street. Give you a chance to walk around. Get a closer look at our four yellow barricades. And go there, see New York Street, and stop by Toon Park, and then go back and see the second half of the tour. Now, with the proper set dressings, props, and signs, we can make these streets look like any city at any time. Just around the corner, if you look behind. Now, as we approach the park again, those of you from New York City may recognize the arch as being the entrance to Washington Square, or we could make this park double as the town square of any small city. Now, let's say you were doing a little filming out here, but you didn't want to film in New York, you wanted to film in Chicago or Los Angeles. Well, that's okay, give us a day. 